Trigonometry, chapter five, trigonometric identities, section three, sum and difference identities, video four, deriving the tangent and sum difference formulas. This series is based on content from Pearson's Trigonometry 12th edition by Lyle Hornsby Schneider and Daniels. In the previous videos, we derived cosine sum and difference formulas and the sine sum and difference formulas. Here they are. In this video, we derive the tangent difference formula and the tangent sum formula. To do this, we ask if there is a way to connect tangent of a minus b to the formulas for cosine of a minus b and or sine of a minus b. Again, classic problem solving strategy. Can we connect what we want to know, tangent of a minus b, to what we already know, cosine of a minus b and or sine of a minus b? Of course there is. Quotient identity, tangent of a minus b equals sine of a minus b over cosine of a minus b. So we're going to start there. Let's immediately replace both sides of this fraction with their respective formulas. Tangent of a minus b equals sine a cosine b minus cosine a sine b over cosine a cosine b plus sine a sine b. And just for clarity, just to make sure we're all on the same page, this is the formula for sine of a minus b. Whereas the denominator is the formula for cosine of a minus b. Now at that point, we could technically stop because we have tangent of a minus b in terms of trig functions of a and b exclusively. But is this the best version of this formula? In other words, can we set up smaller quotients within the larger quotient? If so, which quotients will be beneficial? Okay, that is not an in other words. Saying is this the best version of the formula is not like saying we could set up smaller fractions inside the larger fraction. So I'm not sure what I was thinking when I wrote that. Here's what I'm trying to get at. There's eight trig functions inside of this fraction. And they're all sines and cosines, none of which are tangents. Could we possibly write this in terms of some tangents? That would make sense. Tangent of A minus B equals something in terms of tangent of A and tangent of B. Now, quotients are equal to tangent. Tangent is sine over cosine. So we're going to create some quotients inside of here before I let that cat out of the bag. Um, if we were to look inside of here and think about the pieces that we currently have, can we make some tangents out of these? Well, since tangent is sine over cosine, if you don't know any identities besides the sine squared plus cosine squared equals one, you should know tangent equals sine over cosine. Know it, know it, know it, know it, know it. Can we create some sines over cosines? Well, if you notice in the circled parts up there, there are four sines. There's a sine of A, there's a sine of B, and then they're down here as well. I can make those tangents if I can put them over cosines. So to do that, we're going to multiply both sides of the big fraction by 1 over cosine A cosine B. And this is going to look like a colossal mess that we're making things worse when we do this. Why would I want to go up to this fraction that doesn't have little fractions inside of it and create little fractions? Because I'm trying to create little fractions that do things. I'm trying to create some tangents. So by sneaking in some cosines and denominators, on both sides of the larger fraction, we can make that happen. Now, if we distribute this fraction across the subtraction problem on the bottom and across the addition problem on the right, then we're going to get something that looks like this. Okay, there should be a slide inside of here. I didn't mean to jump from here to here. So I'm going to do something that I normally don't know. Do. I'm going to pause the video for a second. All right, so uh, there was this key slide in there that was missing. This might have been the part where I was making the video during the Dallas Cowboys game yesterday. And uh, if you're watching this video not too long after that game, you realize what a catastrophe that game was. But I digress. Um, we're going to distribute that fraction, 1 over cosine A cosine B, across both the addition and subtraction problems inside the larger fraction and create something that looks like this. And again, this looks like a really hot mess that I'm making things worse. But if you were to focus on all four of these smaller fractions inside the larger fraction, you'll notice some nice things we can take advantage of. 
Namely, that within all four of these boxes, there are things that cancel and there are things that don't. Now, some fractions are equal to tangent, the ones in red. Here it is before, here it is after. The red fractions are equal to tangent, they're sine over cosine. But the other fractions are equal to one, assuming that they're defined. We are assuming that all of these fractions are defined, meaning no zero denominators. So we can replace all the things in red with the tangent and all the things in green with ones, and it would look something like this. So watch all the red, red boxes, tangent, and then on the left, the tangent, and on the right, the three tangents, one on top, two on bottom, and all the green ones become ones. Look on the bottom, on the left, see those two green squares, now it's two ones, and see on the top, on the right side of the subtraction, the first green box becomes a one also. Well, that's nice because all the ones can multiply and basically disappear except for down here. Down here, this one times one is the only thing that survives the multiplication. All the other ones are absorbable, if you will. Tangent of A times one is tangent of A. One times tangent of B is tangent of B. But down here, one times one is one. So we clean those up and we got something like this. Tangent of A minus B equals tangent of A minus tangent of B over one plus tangent A tangent B. And that is our tangent difference formula says what to do with the difference of tangents in terms of tangents. Now, using a similar argument, we can get the tangent sum formula. We get to replicate the same process that we did by stacking these formulas on top of each other and then doing this mess and then cleaning it up. Or we could just use an even odd identity on tangent by changing negative b by changing b to negative b. In other words, by changing this to a minus negative b, which means we would go up here and make these negative b's. But tangent is an odd function, which means the negative comes out, which is why that becomes plus, and this one becomes minus. We're going to clear out all those, maybe. But there's your tangent sum formula. And I believe that's the last slide. We can condense them into one. If you do condense them into one, be very careful about the plus minuses because notice on each one, the sign inside of the tangent on the left matches the sign in the numerator, but is the opposite of the sign of the denominator. The sign in the tangent on the left matches the sign in the numerator, but is the opposite of the one in the denominator. So if we use plus minus notation, the one inside the tangent on the left matches the one inside the numerator, but is upside down of the one in the denominator. And that's the end of section video 5.3.4.